Hello, everybody. Welcome to part six of the Half Thor material. Today, we are going to be looking at chapter 10 and chapter 11. If this is your first time joining us on the channel, welcome. There is a link in the description box to the playlist where you can explore all the other parts before this part. All right, let's get started. Chapter 10, sound as key. All things in the manifest universe are vibrational in nature. Absolutely. The three rules of our Ayurveda are breath, food and sound vibration so all things in the manifest universe are vibrational in nature your science continues to verify that everything that exists in the universe is vibrational in nature from our perspective there is a direct relationship between the form of something and its frequency of vibration furthermore as we view it you are complex interconnecting fields of energy including both light and sound the various cells that compromise the organs and systems of your body emit sound vibrations or frequencies that are complex and interconnected with other cells, thus creating complex cellular resonance. In fact, the entire universe of your body is a walking symphony. You are luminous eggs of cascading energy, creating multiple cascading resonance of sound. Your body, for instance, is a standing wave pattern created through many forces, and these various standing waves that compromise your body are in resonance to the earth and are also affected by the resonant shifts that the earth is going through. At present, the earth is going through a major transitory period in which its own resonance and vibrations are altering and moving in a new state of balance. Therefore, the resonance fields of your body are also transitioning to new level of balance from the subatomic, atomic, and on up to the cellular. And this is affecting your organs and your system. Yes, the earth is ascending and we are ascending with it. If you are new to this, I've said this before on other shows, but I'll just go ahead and say it again. In the law of one, they speak of this. Right now is a very unique time in the cosmic history because right now the Earth itself is moving from a third density planet to a fourth density planet. Third density is the planet of polarity. Once it goes to fourth density, it either goes fourth density positive or fourth density negative. We don't know yet which, which path we're going to take. It's probable that we'll go positive, but it's still not set in stone. And this is the first time cosmically that human being or any other living life form has been able to be on a planet as it goes through the ascension process. Most of the time, all life for, for, force, all life form, there it is, has to get off the planet before the planet can ascend. On top of that, we ourselves are also about to ascend. For those of us who make it, that is. If we're ready to move into a fourth density body from a third density body, some people aren't ready yet just depends so what they're saying here is absolutely correct as we start to ascend into a new a new vibrational reality our body our organs everything has to now match that frequency match that vibration and whether earth goes positive or negative is totally up to us hence why the war we're seeing so obviously being played out is being played out this is creating tremendous internal biological stress, which could translate into physical challenges that sometimes take the form of disease and sometimes fatigue, lethargy, and at times, highly agitated mental emotional states. In the emotional realms, these types of stresses often take the form of emotional instability. Emotions are a multi-level phenomenon which can relate to neurological patterns within your brain as well as to vibrational and sound patterns. The hormonal response within your body also relates to changes in emotions. Emotions affect change in the breathing patterns and oxygenation in the blood, as well as changes in the blood chemistry. Absolutely. The psyche, the thoughts, everything affects your body. This is what's talked about in the Yoga Sutras. This is what we're, we're talking about in our 30-day shadow work challenge, or that we did talk about in the 30-day shadow work challenge, right? Everything we think, every, everything we feel, feelings, emotions are a part of thought affects the body all emotions have a sound signature which was related to their vibratory nature thus emotions can be viewed much like musical chords some of which are melodic and smoothing while others are grating and cacophious i've never heard that word before interesting it is also true that sound or the signature of emotion is held intercellularly through resonant fields in specific areas of your body. This means that an emotion such as anger, as well as its sound signature, will have a certain quality, 
a pitch, and an intensity. The sound signature will move, will emerge from the cells and the cellular resonance of your body and of a specific area of your body. Many people feel their anger in the upper chest area and in the peripheral areas of the arms. Sadness is often experienced within the heart area and also within and around the eyes. Every emotion or emotional reaction has a place of origin within the intercellular resonant field of the body. We talk about that with the chakra system too, right? The body is, is the expression of the soul. So that's correct. Absolutely. And these emotions, reactions, or patterns have specific effects in the terms of chemistry and electromagnetic field patterns of the body. The suppression of emotion is not a healthy thing. The stuffing of emotion, to use one of your terms, actually causes a backlash within the biochemistry of the body. Since we see you primarily as energy bodies or luminous eggs emitting cascading resonance of sound vibration, we notice that when you are purposely suppressing emotion, the sound signature moves deeper into the cellular structure of your body. If you have enough emotional residence repeatedly being suppressed over and over again, you can actually create a negative physical effect. Disease, right? Your physical body will create symptoms of those unexperienced emotions. For example, rage can be translated into physical symptoms of high blood pressure. And there could be many other examples of how emotions can be translated into physical symptoms as a result of the successive suppression of emotional energy. In our discussion of this vital topic, we will explain three areas having to do with sound or vibration. The first area has to do with emotion, the signature of emotion and the expression of emotion through sound as a beneficial technique. The second area has to do with the use of sound to activate specific states of consciousness. And thirdly, we wish to describe the use of sound or vibration as a way to deliberately affect physical process within your body sound signatures to more clearly understand emotion we recommend that you view yourself as a complex resonant field of energy and vibration acknowledging that emotions have sound signatures which can be expressed vocally as a sigh a yell a scream a laugh or even just a noise then you can allow your awareness to encompass the areas of your body where the emotions are being held so that facilitating their release is possible we will propose a series of experiments. If you are unfamiliar with this process so that you may become unattuned or tuned to the method by which you can express and clear emotions through sound. Exploration four. Recall one particular emotion and its feeling response. Then relax as you feel or recall the emotion. Letting your awareness surround the vast interstellar universe of your physical body from head to toe. And I apologize. Speaking of sound, if you hear any crashing sounds, they are building next door. So I apologize if you hear sound effects in this video. Now focus and sense where within your body this emotion is experienced. It may be subtle, but there will be a resonant vibration somewhere in your body in response to the emotion. Allow your awareness to move into this area of your body where the emotion resides and then take a deep breath, allowing yourself to make the sound of the emotion as you exhale. This is not a rational thought process. This is a spontaneous, intuitive, and biological process. It's very loud. This is something you do naturally, but this natural process has become difficult for some people because of the way they have been educated or raised. I don't believe in coincidences, so it's quite funny that they're being super loud today when we're doing an exercise on sound. Children let themselves spontaneously express what they are feeling through crying, laughing, yelling, and some other sound until they are told they cannot express that way and must be quiet. But the natural biological impulse is to make a sound in response to an especially strong emotion. For some of you, retraining yourself to do what human system does naturally, what you did as a child before you were conditioned to be still and quiet, is very important. We are not suggesting a return to child childishness that is disruptive or chaotic. But we are suggesting that you re-own the aspect of your natural biological inheritance. There are things to be said for keeping social peace, however. When it is taken too far, the body will pay a price for suppressing emotional energy instead of allowing an outward expression to occur.
Emotional energy can be cleared through your vocal cords and or through bodily movement rather than pushing it down into the inter intercellular fields of your body, which create unhealthy cellular tension. This type of stress begins when cellular energy fields are forced to hold the vibrational residence of a suppressed emotion. One result of the cellular repression is the creation of negative biochemical responses in the body and a compromise of your life force. The process of preventing or releasing stress is quite simple once you become aware of it. And you can use this method to quickly clear negative emotions that arise. When you experience something that creates an emotional response in you, deliberately move your awareness to the area of your body where you feel the emotional response. Instead of ignoring or denying it, you can even allow yourself to get in touch with the sound and the natural sound that naturally wants to express itself and then dare to make that sound when you are in a private space. Allow the sound to emerge from the emotion. It may be laughing, grunting, or groaning, crying. It may be yelling or even screaming. It may take the form of notes as in musical scale, or it may be more amorphous toning or some such sound. Whatever it is, you allow the form to express itself in its original innocence without forcing it to be anything in particular. We recommend that you use this sound technique on a regular basis in order to clear up emotional energy and to achieve balance. You might begin making these sound expressions in private places where no one will hear or disturb you, but you can also make these sounds very softly at any convenient time. The most important thing is to encourage yourself to become aware of any emotion that you are experiencing and allow its sound signature to emerge from the emotion through your voice. Keep making the sound until you feel relieved and clear. That is the technique. It is very simple and it works. Activating specific states of consciousness. The second level of this material we wish to discuss concerns sound as a means to activate or access specific states of consciousness. From an energetic standpoint, every state of consciousness has its own signature. It is possible to use sound to access these different states of consciousness. This is an ancient science that can be traced back through many different traditions on your planet where precise sounds, sometimes termed mantras, are used as keys to unlock specific levels of awareness and consciousness. I love mantras. Exploration five. Allow yourself to feel a deep sense of peace. Now make a sound that best represents that feeling of peace to you. What sound came forth? Now repeat that sound and remember it for future use. Under stress, you can simply make the same peaceful sound and that will shift your focus back to peace again. Any time in your daily life when you experience states of awareness that you find particularly helpful, merely allow your awareness to move into a sense of that state of consciousness, especially the feeling of that state, and permit a sound or series of sounds to emerge from that state. Listen to the sounds that you make. The sounds that you make from this state of awareness will be a reflection of the sound signature itself. This allows you to access that state again any time you desire. There are two elements then that will allow you to ac access specific states of awareness. And these are combinations of the feeling of it, the sound signature of it. If you were to meditate and reach a deep state of profound space, peace and calm in that moment, you can encompass that feeling through your awareness and then allow a sound or series of sounds to emerge through your voice. Listening to the sounds you make while being aware of the feeling provides a strong means of anchoring these experiences so that you can bring them back to any future time. The two together are extremely powerful because all feelings also have sound signatures. And in this method, you are bringing two elements of a fundamental relationship, feeling and sound, into conscious awareness. It is wonderfully empowering to bring any specific positive state that you have experienced in the past into the present moment. If during the original experience, you can allow an awareness of the feeling response within yourself, along with the sound signature of the state, then you can bring back the state of consciousness simply by feeling it and making the sounds. What this activity requires, however, is an appreciation and mastery of yourself as a complex field of resonance and vibration that expresses as feelings, emotions, and sounds. Identifying and expressing the appropriate combination of feelings and sounds for the effect you desire is a step up in expanded consciousness. Affecting physical processes within the body. The third way sound can be used has to do with its ability to affect physical process, especially physical process within your body for healing. 
It is possible to affect physical process within your own body or the body of another person through sound that makes you in response to the intention that you hold in consciousness. Sound vibration can actually affect the resonant field within intercellular processes down into a genetic levels, even down into the atomic and subatomic levels. The key is the right use of attention, awareness, and sound. This is the triad that will allow you to begin to actually affect physical matter through the agency of consciousness expressing itself through sound. This is a vast domain, and there is no room to fully discuss it in the short space that we have here. However, it is possible to begin to work within the area that we have already given you. As you explore this area, new insights will come to you. Fundamentally, all matter is vibrational in nature regardless of the form it takes. Therefore, by using the right vibrations, it is possible to cause any particular form to resonate or vibrate in response. Using awareness, intention, and the sound of your own voice, it is possible to affect any level of manifest creation. This is also one of your birthrights. Yet mastery of this does not occur until you have expanded your awareness enough to create such a strong, clear intentions that the sounds you allow to emerge are precise enough. When these vibrations come together, you will have a powerful force that can literally change physical states at any level, as unbelievable as this may seem to some people. Changing destiny. Your destiny is not fixed. It is not something totally predetermined. There are aspects of your destiny calling to you, for they have been laid out like a pattern. But the patterns are not permanently fixed. These aspects of fate or destiny are probabilities and can be changed. If you look at your life in terms of a spiral that moves upward ascension or downward devolution, you can see life as either increasing your energy, energy vibration or lowering it. Consciousness goes up and down like a seesaw we previously mentioned. Human experience can flow upward to very high levels of awareness and mastery, and you can also spiral downward into lesser levels of awareness. The question of your destiny and how to change it depends on your awareness choice and vibration. You must have enough awareness to realize that you have a choice. If you practice the methods we have given in this book, you will find your awareness is being elevated and you will realize that you do have a choice in all things. Once you have elevated your awareness to the realization that you are not merely a pawn or a victim in life and that you have options, the future is made free, open, and malleable to change. This shift in perception is key to changing your so-called destiny. When you can accept that the outward patterns unfolding in your life are the expression of the previous patterns held consciousness, freedom is at hand. These patterns are the fruition of beliefs planted by you, your parents and family, your teachers, your peers, and many others in society. While some of these beliefs seem locked into place, they can be changed, and only you can change those beliefs held inside yourself. So this is patterning. We talk about that in the Shadow Work Challenge. You are burning up old patterns of thought. You have the power to do that. Everything isn't held as permanent, even though it feels permanent. That's why fevers come sometimes, because you're burning through patterns, old patterns, in order to make way for new. There is a tendency for humans to look at difficult situations in their lives and feel sorry for themselves, because the situations are not going the way they would wish. This is a lost opportunity from our perspective. I've been saying that, right? All the bad bad stuff, the perceived bad stuff in your life is, just, is ain't nothing but an opportunity. It's interesting. It's an opportunity for friction to create change, right? So let's read that again. This is a lost opportunity from our perspective because if something is not going the way you want and you experience a strong emotional reaction, then the power of that dis dissatisfaction can be used constructively. You can become fully and consciously aware of the incidents and events that are actually occurring and notice your emotional responses to them. While you may or may not be able to change an external situation, you can definitely change your internal reaction to it. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, this is all what we do in yoga. This is exactly what yoga is all about. By changing your internal reactions to cha challenging situations in your life, you create a pivotal point upon which your destiny will continue to unfold and change. 
The way you choose to experience an event will determine how destiny unfolds from that event forward. Indeed, your reaction to situations in your life tend to become internal mechanisms that bring your beliefs forward into outer manifestation. You are planting seeds for your future in every moment of your life, whether you are aware of it or not. It is simply that with awareness, you can have some positive effect on the outcome and positively affect your own destiny to a greater or lesser degree. There are many ways to experience events in your life. And in this regard, we suggest what we call the highest expression of choice. By the highest expression of choice, we mean identifying the internal alignment or attitude that allows you to create the highest level of awareness, the highest level of choice, and the highest level of vibrationary resonance. The highest expression of choice is an expression of compassion. And this is based on the understanding that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, you can hold the attitude of compassion, which is the resonance of acceptance, meaning that you accept both your responses to the situation in your life as well as others, as well as the responses of others. While you may not agree with the responses of others in a state of compassion, you accept that they are, in a point of fact, experiencing those responses. In this mental, emotional state, you are at peace with the dichotomy between your own responses and theirs. When you are in the emotional state of compassion, you are coming from an understanding that everyone is evolving to the best of his or her capacities at any given moment. So in those moments of personal frustration, sadness, anger, blame, fear, or whatever, the attitude of compassion allows you to shift those emotional responses inside of you to an attitude of acceptance. Then a remarkable thing happens. As you hold your own negative emotional responses to whatever is occurring in your life, along with a healthy acceptance of the reality that you are indeed experiencing those negative responses, they will begin to shift and dissipate their energy. And the clarity of awareness will return to you and you remember that you have choices in how you experience those events. By holding yourself and others in compassion, you raise your own vibration, which is key to changing your destiny. Because you are the storm, right? You are the storm. Your vibration is what rages to create that storm. Again, this is all the shadow. This is what we talked about with the shadow work challenge. This is the key to spirit the spiritual path. It's all within you. It's not outside of you. There's no one that's going to come save you in the outside of you world. It's all about you saving yourself. I hope people are seeing that. Trump, the Kennedys, they're not going to save you. You're the white hat. You have to save yourself. Starts with you, inside of you. Compassion is a doorway through which you can move into elevated states of vibratory resonance. And from there, you can alter your destiny in pro profound and beautiful ways. The key to the shifting of destiny takes place in every moment of your life and in every interaction with others. Every moment of your life, life is a choice point, whether you are consciously aware of it or not. When you choose awareness, acceptance, and compassion for every life event you experience, wisdom and peace are your rewards. Recognize that all beings are evolving and making the best possible choices for themselves that they are presently capable of. Some people's choices may create pain for you or for them, just as some of your own choices may create pain for you or for them. Yet by holding life in this paradox of compassion and acceptance, you allow negative emotional reactions to dissipate, bringing the clarity of awareness. Since nothing is fixed or static, but ever changing, when you shift your perception to the octave of acceptance and compassion, you move into higher vibratory fields, spiritually speaking, and this will lead you to higher destiny you seek. So these are the three keys to changing your destiny. Awareness, choice, and vibration. In regards to the act of changing your destiny, Master Teacher Yahshua once said, to he who has, it shall be given. To he who has not, it shall be taken away. What he was alluding to was the universal law of vibration. If you want to unfold something, to experience something in your destiny, you must hold it as a vibration in your own consciousness. You must have the feeling of it in order to express itself. If you do not have the feeling or the vibration of it, then it cannot express itself into manifested reality. If, for instance, 
you want loving relationship then you must hold that vibration of loving relationships in your own consciousness and then you will draw loving people to you through the law of magnetic attraction if you do not at this moment have loving relationships but are instead experiencing frustration anger separation and isolation then you must own and accept the truth that you are holding a negative vibration and that is what you are drawing to you through the laws of magnetics if you do not like your current reality then you must change both your thinking and your emotional mis misperceptions to change your vibration vibration is a vital key to changing your destiny the final key that unlocks doorways to a greater life the power to change your own destiny is in your hands and no one else's let me read that again or say that again the power to change your own destiny is in your hands and no one else's you are the storm you're it boom let us then review the three keys to changing your destiny which you mentioned earlier you must retain the awareness that choice is possible in every circumstance indeed there are states of consciousness in which the truth of choice making is obscured and in these states of mind you may feel that you have no choice and that everything is hopeless some of you reading this material may at this very moment be in a situation that feels completely hopeless to you and which you cannot fathom or imagine any way out of it yet be very clear on this the keys to changing your future external reality comes from the choices that you make within yourself no matter how desperate a situation is you can change your internal orientation and plant the seed of a new destiny pattern which will unfold as surely as the Sun will rise so the first key of awareness is choice the second key is to actually make the choice humans sometimes have a problem with making important choices we observe many who would rather mope around and be lost in negativity blaming others or themselves for their past for what is happening to them rather than making the choice to get out of the lower vibration if you are not willing to move then you are not within the stream of life for life is always moving and always changing once you have awareness of choice you actually have to make the choice of how you will elevate and respond to events as we said earlier we are of the opinion that the highest expression of choice compassion for both yourself and others is the most resourceful way to change your destiny holding yourself and others in an attitude of acceptance no matter what may be occurring in your thoughts and feelings sets off a resonance in which consciousness a vibrational field that may touch others and change them it will certainly change you as you hold yourself in a state of compassion and acceptance difficult emotional energies will eventually begin to even out and you will become clearer regarding your ability to make positive choices then you will have entered another vibratory resonance and what might be called an ascended attitude this is your third key the ascended attitude of acceptance and forgiveness for yourself and for all other beings is a truly high vibration it allows you to make different choices and allows you to create different outcomes that you could never have achieved in lower vibrations the laws of the universe are impersonal and exact the choices you make daily from moment to moment are the template of your future destiny the seeds that you plant in ascended states of awareness and feelings such as compassion and acceptance will support your life your advancing consciousness indeed these seeds of ascension have multi-dimensional outcomes and under certain circumstances they can even affect external situations you hold within yourself all vibrations from the lowest of low to the highest and most exalted you can express the demonic and bestial or you can express the celestial and the angelic as well as everything in between this duality is your human nature and spiritual mastery is the awareness and understanding that the choices you make will determine what unfolds for you.